Chair Lisa. Hi, Mr. Gaspar. Hi. Hi. Thank you for the opportunity to stay and testify today. I'm Lisa Gaspar. I'm the Executive Director of Citizens for Public Schools and a consultant for Fair Test. And I'd like to join many other educators, parents, and students who are recommending against moving to park. I also urge you to take this opportunity to recognize that whether park or MCAS, we need to have less testing and no high stakes if we are to achieve the goal of educating all of our children to be successful, engaged, and productive adults. First and foremost, park tests do not measure what we value and what our students need to be successful in college and career. Instead, they remain a narrow, mostly multiple choice measure of just two academic subjects. Whenever I speak to groups of parents, students, and teachers, I always start by asking the same question. What is school for? And I ask when you send your children to school each day, what are you hoping that they'll get out of school? And people will often say things like they hope they'll learn how to get along with different kinds of people, develop a lifelong love of learning, learn how to collaborate and resolve conflicts. They hope they'll be exposed to science, art, music, and literature, and learn how to think critically about issues facing our communities and the world. No one has ever said an answer to that question. They send their children to school to prepare to, prepare to take multiple choice tests in math and reading. But it's really no exaggeration to say that for many children, that's what school is becoming or has become. The fact that park tests are split into two parts means even more time taken from well-rounded instruction. With park, the second section is so close to the end of the year there's no more time after testing for engaging projects or field trips as many teachers have done after MCAS. This year, teachers report that many students with disabilities and English language learners lost the services they need and that the law requires because teachers were pulled to proctor tests. For all students, part tests increase time devoted to assessment and rob time for learning. Since I was invited to present expert testimony, I want to share what I've heard from the real experts, those with experience administering park tests. Here's what teachers I've spoken with have told me. A sixth grade math teacher said that when she designs an assessment, she designs it so it's clear where the student has stumbled so she can use the results to help her students improve. Park does not do that. For example, a sixth grade math question ask students to add, subtract, multiply, divide, and interpret the remainder. If they get this kind of question wrong, she has no idea where they went astray and how to help them. Another teacher spoke about Park's impact on her own children. She said they were only getting science for one month and social studies for one month this year. As Fall River Education Association President Rebecca Cusick has said, quote, passing a test is not the end game all effort goes into improving scores. This happens at the expense of those things not as easily measured, such as creativity and independent thinking. Weymouth teacher David, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, Jural, decided he could no longer tolerate the impact of our test-driven system on his ability to do his job. In his resignation letter, he wrote, I can either devote my time to teaching or I can help the district produce its precious data, but I can't do both. Students need to be taught, not analyzed. They are human beings, not an experiment, not parts of a machine coming off of an assembly line. My students need and deserve my full attention, something I cannot give under the current circumstances. A critical problem at Park is that by outsourcing our testing to Pearson, we lose important state and local control. As the problems are identified, they can't be easily fixed. Let's take back that control and share it with the experts, our educators. I hope that you reject a move to park and revisit the question of what kinds of assessments would drive better teaching and learning in the Commonwealth. I hope we can look at systems that have been successfully using performance assessments, such as the New York Performance Standards Consortium, which now includes 48 public high schools in New York. Schools have shown 
dramatically better outcomes than traditional schools using standardized exams, including better high school graduation and college persistent rates, lower dropout rates, less suspension, and lower teacher turnover. The results have been particularly strong in these schools for students with disabilities and English language learners. And finally, I want to challenge the members of the board to take the eighth grade park test. CPS has co-sponsored a series of Take the Park events where teachers, parents, and school board members took sample tests and then spent an hour discussing them. These discussions sur surfaced many concerns and issues with the test. I think each board member should take the eighth grade exam, publicly report their results, and have a discussion based on their own experience before voting. Thank you so much.